This PowerPoint references the results from the 2016 Tell Oregon Survey, available online at www.telloregon.org. The intent of the PowerPoint is to help OEA members develop an understanding of the Tell Oregon survey results in their schools and school district. Today's PowerPoint is on utilizing your district comparison report. In 2014, the Oregon Education Association, in collaboration with other education stakeholders, launched the Tell Oregon Survey, the Teaching, Empowering, Leading and Learning Tell Oregon Survey is an anonymous statewide survey of licensed school-based educators to assess teaching conditions at the school, district, and state levels. The survey was again offered to educators in 2016. 18,266 educators in the state participated. Now we'll get started looking at the district comparison reports. To view results from the survey, click the Survey Results button on the home page. Your district needed to have at least 35% of its educators participate in the survey, with a minimum of 20 participants to earn a district report. If you met those requirements in 2014 and again in 2016, your district will have an available comparison report. This report is an easy way to see how your current results compare to the 2014 baseline data. Simply click on the side-by-side -side icon for your school district of choice. The report will open to this page. On the left sidebar, you can find links to jump to the different categories or constructs of questions. This year, you have the option of downloading an Excel file of the report, which will allow you to sort and search the data, as well as a PDF, which is an easy way to send and print copies of the report. The first item you may be interested in noting is the percentage of educator participants in 2014 and 2016. Have there been any significant changes to participation rates? Do educators in the district know why the rates are what they are? And what about those educators not taking the survey? Does your team know why they're not participating? Or is more information needed? The report itself shows the percentage rates for agreement with statements about teaching and learning conditions under the different constructs. This year's data is in the left-hand column, and the 2014 baseline data is in the right-hand column. This year, the rates of agreement are color-coded from shades of red, as an indication of a low rate of agreement, through shades of yellow, as an indication of above a 60% rate of agreement, through shades of green, as indication of a high rate of agreement. Viewing the color shading horizontally may help you quickly determine how close to the 2014 baseline data your 2016 responses are. It can also be a quick way to see which areas have improved and others which may still be areas of concern. Now that you have taken a look at and understand the structure of the report, let's review some first steps to analyzing the data. You will need a copy of the report. And you may want to use a table that is set up something like this.
To begin our analysis, we are going to start with looking at one construct at a time. In this example, we will begin in the time construct. A first step would be to utilize the colors and notice if there are any major color contrasts. This will identify rates of agreement with the largest percentage change. The next step would be to calculate the changes. Your team can determine what they would consider a significant change. For our purposes, we will use a shift of approximately 10% or above to be considered noteworthy. If you had identified any tell items as priorities in 2014, make sure you note your 2016 results for those items. We will then transfer this information onto our table. As you collect the information on the statements where your percentage has changed, you may want to start jotting ideas and questions in the notes column. In your conversations with educators and administrators, it will be important to take time to dig down into the issues and really focus on those practices which you can solve. Many issues that shape teaching and learning conditions within a district are outside of the district's control, such as federal and state assessment policies or funding, as an example. School improvement planning should focus on areas that can be addressed by the district's community. A plan with solutions that depend upon the efforts of a decision maker outside of the district is not likely to be successful. During the course of your conversation about your comparison results, your team may naturally determine its next steps, but for additional assistance in conducting meaningful labor management conversations around teaching and learning conditions, or for other tools to help you make use of your TEL survey results, please visit the Oregon Education Association website at www.oregoned.org and download a copy of our organizing guide. This guide has ideas to use with your colleagues and administrators to help create positive changes within your district using your TEL survey results. Or for more personalized assistance, feel free to contact Rebecca Konafal or Colleen Milam at OEA Center for Great Public Schools with any questions about using the TEL survey results or our training videos. Our next video is on utilizing your school's comparison results. Thanks for joining us and have a great day.